So, today we're going to go over what goes into planning for an Iron Man suit build like this. So as you can tell from the title, I'm making the Mark VI. Um, my plan for this suit is to be as screen accurate as possible. I think everybody sets that as their goal, and that's what I said for this suit too. So we're going to go, you know, full motorized panels. There's going to be a startup sequence. We're going to have, you know, the missiles, uh, missile pods in the shoulders, as much as I possibly can without going insane. So it is worth noting that I am not modeling the suit myself this time. I'm only modifying a base model that I got from do3d.com and we're going to go into that in a second. So we're, we're going to jump into concepts, idea generation, and the material and budgeting estimates first. So when it comes to budgeting this build, I'm trying to track literally everything this time. I've been really, 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 really bad about that in the past. I have literally no idea how much I spent on this build. Uh, there's probably way too much, but I, I would never know. And so now I'm finally tracking it. I have it in my notes app on my MacBook. Right now I have, I've, I've spent 200, about $200 on filament. I got 15 rolls of PLA. I actually just missed the really ridiculous Sunlu deal on PLA Plus. Otherwise I would have gotten that because I would have saved a ton of money and I would have had a stronger material, but I missed it. So yeah, um, we're sorting it by filament electronics and paint. Paint estimates, I'm actually going off a rough, a rough estimate uh, from Frank, frankly built. Um, he just did a repaint on his Mark 85, and so I'm basing my paint estimates off of that, you know, give or take a couple cans. So here's here's like a brief rundown of everything I have budgeted so far. Um, the electronics uh, are still a bit iffy, just because I haven't fully planned how much of the suit is going to move, what's gonna light up, what I need to control, you know, switches, all that kind of stuff battery packs need to be included. So far we have about 400 total in terms of paint and filament. Haven't bought the paint yet. Electronics will definitely cost me a pretty penny. Ooh. I'm estimating it'll be three to $400 in terms of electronics. So that would probably put the build up to 700, maybe $800, which honestly is not a terrible price considering everything I'm trying to do. Um, we'll see how that changes as we get farther along in the build because you need to budget with a little bit of a cushion because stuff like this, like you'll make mistakes, you'll make paint errors, uh, you'll burn out a board. So uh, you have to you have to leave a cushion. So um, it'll probably max $1,000. That's, that's what I'm aiming for. So what I'm planning for this build is, originally we were gonna have the Jarvis system and this, this big boy right here. Uh, and he did not work out if you've watched my last few videos. He looked really cool, and, and he still does, but he did not function very well. Uh, the plan now is to move the current Jarvis system to this new build, which I think I think will be a lot more promising. I think uh, now that I have a file to kind of base everything off of, I can I can actually play around with electronics and like have fun with this kind of stuff because I was so busy designing this thing and like the exoskeleton that I never really had a chance to play with electronics. So this will give me the opportunity to do that. So the kinds of things I plan for when we're going into electronics, you know, how many panels I want to move, what I want to light up, um, you know, helmet obviously has to move, so that's something to keep in mind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a Jarvis, like Jarvis is going to control the entire suit this time, so the helmet will be uh, wired to the main board, uh, which is something I haven't done yet. Uh, usually it's a standalone system with a battery pack in the back, but this time I'm going to have it run through the entire suit, it's going to hook up to Jarvis, and there's going to be a microphone in the chin, as well as probably a chin button. Um, I'll see how that works out, but um, that's the idea. And that way I can give commands through my helmet and control everything. Everything. <laughs> so what I'm planning 100% is that there will be like some kind of like startup sequence. So you know how like in Iron Man 1, uh, he suits up in his Mark II and you know, they go through the protocol, like all the wings are flapping up and the legs are moving and stuff, you know, like a, like a test protocol. So we're going to do a test protocol, that's what this animation sequence is actually simulating. It'll basically move everything, I can make sure everything's working properly, and then we're good to go. Um, there will also be separate commands to move individual flaps. Um, I also really, really want to do um, an instant kill mode. So, you know, like Spider-Man, but for the Mark VI. So, like, all the lights turn red, inner helmet lights turn red, and it shuts, like, closes down. Uh, all the weapons come up. Something something that I can play with and have fun with. That's the kind of stuff I'm planning. I'll also have like triggers in the fingers and the wrists to control some of the suit as well. 
just in case I don't want to constantly speak to Jarvis because that can kind of get it annoying. When it comes to sound effects, uh, I'm, I'm very limited when it comes to the soundboard I have. There's only like 11 voice line options, space-wise I mean. So um, there won't be a, like a ton of sound effects, but that's actually a good thing because if you get too many sound effects, it gets really annoying and repetitive, and then you have to deal with that the entire time you're wearing the suit. So that's something we're gonna avoid. So when I'm planning for a build like this, I usually, you know, surf, surf the web. I, I look through the internet and I look at pictures mainly from the Hot Toys figures. Um, they're really, really, really good reference pictures because sometimes you can't get a really good still of the actual suit you want to build from the movie. Like say you're doing um, Star Boost or Heartbreaker or, you know, Iron Man 3, one of the Iron Legion suits that you can't really get stills from. Um, Hot Toys figures are excellent options for uh, resources and references for that build. Another thing is I look through concept art books. I have a couple and I was kind of looking through them for my Mark VI. So I look through those, I look through GIFs um, to see how, how the suit moves, how it functions, how it looks in certain lighting. Another thing I really, really like to do is look through the movies, like rewatch the movies, um, whichever one your shoe's in, and I can guarantee you'll find a really awesome resource. I noticed that um, the chin on his helmet actually moves forward when it opens and then moves back when it closes. So that's how I implemented that feature into my design. If we look at the base model from DO3D, a lot of the panels are not cut out. The file itself is not a bad file. The big downside is that a lot of the panels aren't cut out. So if you want to motorize back panels like what I want to do, you can't because they're not cut out. So what you have to do is you have to cut those out yourself in Blender, which is exactly what I did. So I'm still in the modification process, but like there will be more to come. I'll be changing way more. Right now all I have is the back panels, some of the forearm panels cut out, some of the ab panels cut out. I've got some battle damage done. And I've got the missile pods designed as well as the chin piece that comes out. So what I plan to do is there will be a couple leg panels that also move as well as I'll be cutting out the bottoms of the boots so I can do like a boot cover kind of thing. And I'll be redesigning the hip pods themselves because I don't like how they're personally designed. I want them to house uh, LEDs so I can have like a more full body um, animation sequence and the way that they're designed right now is they're, they're not hollowed out, I can't put stuff into them, so. Another thing I really like to do with my suits is have a removable arc reactor. So I have that in this suit right here, and I also had that in uh, my previous suits. It just makes it so much easier if you have like electronical problems. Electronical problems? Electronic problems? If you have electronic problems, you can just pop the arc reactor out, open it up, and fix it. Which is actually what happened with this suit at Silicon. That's something I also want to do. I know this suit has a inner chest detail piece. And it comes with an arc reactor design, but I'll actually be scrapping the arc reactor design and designing my own. That way I can pop it in and out, and the chest piece will also be removable uh, as well, just so I can interchange the battle damage and uh, the normal versions. And this, this will be a common theme with all of my suits, I think, at this point. Um, I, I really like the battle damage look, and I don't like having... I don't like being forced into one box in terms of fresh new suit and battle damage suit. Another thing I'm going to be modifying that I'm doing differently from... My previous suits is I'm going to be cutting out the top part of like this hand plate. That way I can actually go like this because I can only move like this much because the wrist and the hand collide. So this will allow me to go like this and then the wrist cover will cover all of that anyway so you won't see it. Now for the helmet of this suit, I'm actually not using DO3D's model either. Uh, Beck 3 d actually has a really awesome helmet so uh, check him out if you can, Instagram. Yeah, so I, I reached out to him and I was like, hey dude, like your helmet's a thousand times better than DO3D's, can I use yours? So that's what we're doing. I don't know why I'm pointing to him, that's not the suit I'm talking about. <laughs> I cut out the chin piece and I battle damaged one piece of, or a copy of the faceplate so we can have the battle damage version and the clean version. Now I didn't cover scaling at all in this video. Um, I'm actually going to make a separate video about that. I'm testing a new method. I'll explain more in another video, but I'm, I'm playing with a new method. If it works out, I'll make a video. If it doesn't, you probably won't see anything because why would I teach you something that doesn't work? I, I, I don't know. So this is the start of this new build. Um, I'm, I hope you guys are excited. I'm freaking pumped to have a suit that I can actually kind of play with and have some creative freedom. I'm, this this will be the suit that I can hopefully keep forever and wear repeatedly and not have problems. So let's cross our fingers. If you want to see more, if you want to continue watching the series as it comes out, uh, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, please, please. Thanks for watching.
Bye-bye.